Hi, everyone. Uh, let's make a start, shall we? Um, I think it's just, just under quarter two, so I think a few more people will obviously um, join. But I, I hope everyone who's uh, tuned in already is enjoying the event so far. And um, so thanks to the uh, Resolution uh, Foundation for finding a way to bring us all together like this. Um, so in this session, we'll, we're going to be talking you through what it is like to work in communications and uh, working with the media within a think tank. Um, so my name is Simon Keane. I'm the media and communications manager for the Nuffield Trust and we're a health and care policy think tank. Um, I'm joined here by Thomas Housechild, uh, the communications manager for the Centre for Progressive Policy. And we've also got Melissa Tim the Digital Communications Manager for the Institute for Government. Um, we're going to each take a few minutes now to talk you through our, our respective roles um, and give you an overview of how our organisations communicate our work, uh, whether that's to the media, uh, government or, or social media users. Um, we will then open up the floor to you guys um, and we'll do our best to answer uh, as many questions as we can within the 10 minutes. So if you guys can ask questions via the Q&A function, which I think is at the bottom of your screen, um, I can see we've already got um, one in there now, so I think you guys know how to use it. So yeah, the Q&A at the bottom screen rather than the chat function, please. Um, you can also raise your electronic hand if you want to, want to speak. Um, after the session, there'll be an FAQ circulated, so if we don't get your question, don't worry, hopefully, um, it, they'll be picked up in, in there. So, um, so I'll jump in first and just give an overview of my role and then we'll come to Thomas and, and Melissa. So I'm a, well, I was, I'm a public relations graduate um, from Bournemouth University and I'm from the Southwest of England originally. Um, before coming into the think tank world, I worked in uh, a couple of events companies I've worked for PR agencies as well, so promoting health technology um, companies to kitchens at one point um, before moving into press office work in health. At the Nuffield Trust, I run the press office, which means I'm usually the first person journalists or television and radio producers end up speaking to if they want to work with us. The media are a really important stakeholder for the Nuffield Trust, they're a really important stakeholder for think tanks in general in general. Um, they're a vital tool to reach a large audience and with good timing and broader appeal, um, it can help to influence policymakers and too. And also I think our, you know, our researchers love to see and hear themselves on television and on the radio. Um, and I'm basically the person that gets the right people talking to each other um, so that we can get our work out to as many people as possible via the media. So through newspapers, through specialist magazines, through the radio, through television uh, and online. Um, like other think tanks, we have a broad range of experts, each have their own speciality. Um, so we have an expert in workforce, an expert in social care, for example. Part of my job is to brief them um, and to run mock interviews with them to make sure they feel supported and they feel able to talk about their work live on television um, and then when they're questioned by journalists. I also write press releases uh, and issue comments highlighting key findings from our work and explaining why those really matter to, to um, the readers and watchers of television and radio channels. Um, so it's a good role, it's a great role, I think, in terms of where it sits in the organization, because not only do I get to work with communications colleagues um, who cover a range of stuff such as digital design, um, publications, I also get to work with the researchers, get to work with the leadership team. So you get a really good oversight of everything going on inside the think tank. Um, and it's a rewarding role as well, because you see, you see that research on television and radio and you can see uh, you know, you can see the impact it's making and, and hopefully changing people's um, lives for the better. So we, we promote all sorts of works, briefings, reports. Um, we've been doing a chart of the week series during the pandemic. We promote events as well. So we're working on our um, online summit series, which is coming up in the middle of March. Um, so there's plenty of stuff to, 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 talk, to talk about. Um, and I think the trick is, in any piece of research, if you really boil it down, there's something of interest in there for people like me and you. Um, but the trick is finding that and then communicating it in the most clear way possible. Um, so yeah, no, I think 
think tanks communications is really valued in think tanks. I think think tanks are filled with different people. I think different perspectives and viewpoints are really important. There's no point in only talking to people like yourselves. And I think in terms of communication itself, it's a very varied career. Um, and I've certainly had the chance within a, within a smaller think tank to get stuck into different areas outside of my own media role. And I've certainly found my experiences in other jobs to be helpful um, in doing that. So, so that's it for me. So Thomas, I'll hand over to you. Thanks so much, Simon. I hope everyone can, can hear me clearly. Um, well, um, I'm Thomas Harshide. I'm the Communications Manager at um, the Centre for Progressive Policy. It's um, a rather small think tank. We are only around about 10 people and that's set up around about three years ago. So we're still in our startup or could possibly call it scale-up phase now. Um, I've been previously at the Institute for Fiscal Studies and the Royal Society of Arts. Um, before that, I studied international relations and conflict resolution. And before I went to uni, I had a very different career. I spent um, a few years at a bank in Germany doing an apprenticeship, and um, I spent a few years in the German Navy. So if you want to talk to anyone who has drastically changed his career, please, um, please do approach me. Um, so the Center for Progressive Policy, or CPP as we call it, focuses on uh, making inclusive growth a reality. Um, that focuses mostly on project or on, on research areas like skills, um, health, local government finance, and the role of business in society, because all these factors are quite important if you want to um, empower as many people as possible to, to benefit to, but also contribute from economic growth. Um, the biggest difference between us and larger, more established think tanks is probably that we don't have a large comms team. We are one and a half comms people, so me full time, someone else part time. And the advantage is that in such a small team, you really get your hands on everything you do. Um, the media engagement, be it proactive or reactive. Um, you do the website, social media, um, you coordinate the report production, you work on um, or support stakeholder engagement. And then you also support the events with um, marketing to get as many people in front of the stage for nowadays in front of the screen as possible. Um, I'm also involved in the post event marketing to disseminate our our videos um, so in larger organizations you're probably more likely to find people who are specialized on certain areas whereas in the smaller ones you have more like a jack of all trade who does who does a bit of, of everything um, so um, as i mentioned i lead on the communications in our think tank which is basically all about getting our message out and um, as simon just said connecting the people do the research with the people who should know about the research. Um, there is not really um, a typical day for a comms manager in a think tank, I would say. Um, if you would ask me what my highlights are, it's probably our report launches. Um, I support the, um, the production or the coordination of the report production and do the media outreach, um, make sure that the website and social media are up to date. And sometimes we have launch events as well to accompany the, the report launch. Um, that's probably the most exciting time, also the busiest time, I have to say, but it's um, truly rewarding if you, if you get your message out there and you get attention by, by media or influential stakeholders. Um, on other days, I might do a wide range of things. I might pitch blogs to the media to keep us in the conversation in between major publications or just to be part of a bigger debate. And um, so, for example, um, we've just done quite a bit on the, on the proposed council tax increase and um, we try to be, be a voice in that debate. Um, we think about how we respond to um, major announcements like the upcoming budget next week, for example, that's always a big thing for the think tank world. Um, I respond to media inquiries and help to prepare team members. I write newsletters. Um, I disseminate, as I said already, event invitations to get the right people in front of the screen or the stage. Um, I support um, the marketing of events afterwards, um, or we discuss public relations um, matters. So for example, we talk about what kind of language we should use to engage with which parties, when is the best time to hold an event or, or report. Um, that's pretty much me, I would say my role in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. Great, thanks very much, Thomas. Um, Melissa, let's come over to you then. Yeah, so uh, hi everyone. Um, so I'm Melissa, I'm the Digital Communications Manager at the Institute for Government. Um, so we're the leading think tank working on um, making government more effective. 
Um, so I've been at the Institute of Government for about five years now, but before that, um, so I did a degree in politics at the University of Southampton. I uh, also worked in local and regional press. Uh, so I actually did um, a National Council for the Training of Journalists course. Um, and that kind of helps me develop a lot of the skills that I actually use now. Um, and then eventually moved into press and communications roles, um, mostly in the university sector. So I worked at Sussex University um, and also LSE. Um, and then eventually moved into, um, into the think tank world uh, with IFG. So when I saw that IFG was hiring for their comms team, it seemed like a really good fit having done politics at university and then the sort of work experience that I had. Um, in terms of my role now, it is very varied, as I think Simon just said, communications roles can be very varied. Um, so I focus more on the sort of digital side of things. Um, my role is probably more focused on content and content management. Um, so our researchers produce excellent uh, reports and they write comment pieces and explainers and so on. And so my role is to kind of make sure that all that content is flowing through properly across all of our digital platforms. So I manage our website um, and that can be anything from uploading content to editing, proofing, making sure that the copy is um, optimized for search engines, because obviously we want to make sure that people can find our work, um, to also thinking about how we communicate work on the website, how we present things, the layout, um, you know, is it accessible? Are people able to find what they're looking for? Um, I also manage our social media uh, channels. So from Twitter to Instagram, we haven't quite made it onto TikTok yet, um, but, um, you know, uh, writing tweets. Um, I work very closely with the researchers to think about best ways we can use social media to um, promote their reports, for example, um, ahead of report launches, um, planning content on social media um, with an eye on what's going on in the news. I will also monitor discussions on social media. You know, if there's something quite topical that lots of people are talking about, I will perhaps say to our research teams, you know, hey, people are talking about, I don't know, civil service relocation. Perhaps you could do a tweet thread on this. Um, or, you know, if we've got existing content on that, pushing that out across all of our platforms as well. Um, one other aspect of my work as well is, um, I suppose, content design. So I do a lot of things like producing videos, um, infographics, data visualizations. So I work very closely with our research teams on that. I mean, not everyone has time to sit and read a 70 page re report. So I will work with the research teams to think about sort of creative and visual ways that we can um, pull out some of the key messages in their research and perhaps distill it into something that's quite eye-catching um, and will capture people's attention uh, as well. Um, in terms of other things that I do, I work quite closely with our um, head of digital marketing to think about our audiences, who they are, what's the best way of engaging with them, how can we reach them. Um, and also work very closely with the events team, um, thinking about how we can promote our events, um, how we brand them, how we live tweet. Obviously with um, the pandemic, we've moved all of our events online. So um, that means that we've got lots of great video and audio content from our events. We have lots of brilliant speakers that come in. So also thinking about what we can do with that um, after an event has taken place. Um, I do a little bit on sort of general public relations, handling press and, and media uh, contacts and media bids, um, tr with tracking when our researchers are on BBC News and um, things like that. Um, and I also get to work on quite a lot of long term projects as well. So thinking about how our processes work within the communications team um, and things like web redevelopment. So, yeah, it's a very uh, varied role. It does mean that you're um, having to be across quite a lot of the detail across all the teams, but um, it's also very rewarding. You know, um, there's something quite satisfying about, you know, as I think Simon said, you know, when you see like your researchers on, on the news or uh, in the media and things like that. So um, yeah, hopefully that gives a little bit of a flavor of, of what I do. Great, thanks. Thanks, Melissa. Yeah, um, well, I think an IFG TikTok account would be 
would be a very would be a very popular uh, TikTok account. Um, <laughs> I yeah, it's striking to me that you know certainly Thomas, you doing a bit jack of all trades there, a small comms team, Melissa. Um, you covering in bits of the media, social media, as well as the digital publication side as well. And then, you know, a lot of those roles are familiar in my role as well. So I look up to social media in our organization as well. So I think it just gives you, in, in terms of communications, you know, coming into a communications job at an entry level, it, it's a really good career option because you can pick up different skills in different areas and you do get a chance to get involved in policy or events um, and then specialize your career as you go on so um i'll try and get some of these questions in because we've only got about five minutes left of the um session um there's a question here from from ella which i think we can probably all answer quite quickly um how sociable is your work in general are you working with a team or are you sat alone behind a desk I think for communications people this year has been a really tough one because we've all been, I imagine you guys have been, well, well, I can see that we're all sat at home uh, rather than our offices. So it, um, it's, a, it's a very sociable job and uh, I view it as a very sociable job. Um, you work across the team, you're regularly talking with you, you're regularly exchanging information. Um, I, I don't think there's any kind of part of my job that I could do without the rest of the team behind me. Um, I don't know what do what do you think, Melissa? Um, I totally agree. I think um, you know we are one of the teams in the organisation that I think you do have to work with everybody from you know people in ops to events to partnerships to all of the research teams. Um, so it is a very sociable job, and I suppose with working from home, there is something that you know it can be quite difficult to kind of recreate that. You know, when whereas when you're in an office environment. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a, a sociable role. Um, and it's probably one of my favorite things as well is that I get to work so much with, with all the teams across the organization um, and to get to know what they're, what they're doing as well. And Thomas? Yes, I, I totally agree with that. I think as a, as a comms person, you are almost at the center of everything because you have to engage with everyone, the research of the engagement, the directors, the ops team, events team. You, you sit almost, well, I wouldn't say I sit in the center, but you, 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 you're connected to everyone in the team. And as soon as you finish working on one research project, you move over to the next one. So you have quite a lot of um, variety. Yeah, so it's, it's very sociable. Um, yeah. Okay, thank you both. Le, le, um, looking at the, the questions here from both Hugh and Matt that, that touch on the NCTJ um, journalism postgrad that you, you, did, uh, you talked about, Melissa um how i mean obviously myself working in media I, I don't have that particular qualification i come in from the public relations point of view and also there's also lots of entry level kind of communications jobs you can come into where you pick up skills from other people uh, why don't you tell us a bit about the the course melissa and how you how helpful you think that's been or or, or whether you think that there, there are other routes in as well yeah i think um for me it was very helpful I initially had the idea of, of actually you know doing journalism uh, as a career um, and so obviously it was useful for that in terms of building those kind of key foundational skills um, uh, and um, you know and a lot of that I still use now so when I did the course we did things like news writing which is obviously very useful if you're working in a press role where you're going to, going to be writing um, press releases um, it's also a great way of just getting a sense of how journalists work and, and the ways in which they, they reach out to sources and, and that sort of thing. Um, uh, and, you know, I also had the chance to do things like um, typesetting and, and um, layout. And that can also be useful if you want to um, do more of a publications editor type role within a think tank. Um, I wouldn't say it's the, the be all and end all of, of uh, you know, I wouldn't say it's necessary to get into a communications role. I mean, I, I feel it was a good stepping stone for me to get my first, um, uh, well, I suppose it was an internship that I did. That was my first sort of role in communications and press. Um, it was, so it was a good way of, of moving into that. Um, but I do think that I ended up learning a lot more on the job. So I think having that real life experience um, it's perhaps more important than 
like, as I said, you don't necessarily need the NCTJ in order to, to move into communications. I think communications is something that you learn quite a lot on the job. So I wouldn't worry too much about making sure you've got that specific qualification. Mm. And, and, and Thomas, just to wrap up, you, you said you had quite a career change from, from the Navy into uh, communication. So obviously, well, how would you consider your sort of job on the job training? I, I think what helped me quite a lot is while I was at university, I did a couple of internships in the sales sector um, to get this switch from the, the public sector to the sales sector. Then um, I started off in um, project coordination and then communications role in the purchasing tank that I worked and took it from. But I, I don't have um, any <clears throat> formal communications qualifications, and I think most people who work in that field don't, to be honest. Most people have probably a bit of a social science background. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it helps, but I didn't feel that I needed it in my job, because similar to what Melissa says, it, it's a lot of learning by doing in the job. Great, thank you. Um, I think we're, because the session is only 20 minutes long, there is a... Um, a, a 10 minute sort of break in between this one and the next session. So um, just before we wrap up, I'll, I'll let you know that um, the next two sessions are starting at quarter past five. Um, one's covering policy work and the opportunities outside of London. And the second and the other session is covering communications and events. Um, and the links to those sessions have already been emailed over to participants. Uh, all, the, all the sessions are recorded. So you can watch any back that you haven't seen later on. Um, so yeah, unfortunately we don't have time to address too many of the really good questions actually that have come through. Um, clearly we need uh, more than 20 minutes don't we, to kind of talk about ourselves <laughs> uh, and our own, but hopefully we've given you an insight into, into uh, a communications career, into, the, into, into think tanks. So um, it, is, it is a very varied career fast pace, lots of different things to get involved in, very sociable. Um, so yeah, I think the, certainly the three of us would, would re re recommend it. So um, so with that, I'll say uh, thank you for joining us and um, uh, enjoy the rest of the event. Thanks.